Hello everyone, once again welcome back to Server Game. My name is Dr. Lokin Singh and today we are going to discuss about a recent interview which I have conducted and a couple of questions were there which I asked but the candidate with 7 or 8 years eight year of experience was not able to explain in proper manner. So I thought of sharing these particular things with you. So first of all about profile. So when we talk about our profile, we need to consider a couple of things that we need to complete about the introduction within two to three minutes. All the major tasks or the particular responsibilities which you have need to explain very clearly. We need not to go in really depth. The reason being, once your introduction is over, so based on that, the person is for sure going to ask you the questions. Let us say you have worked in automation. So the person may ask you about some script. For example, if you say you have worked on database, the person may ask a couple of questions related to that the database, like how did you turn in, how did you take backup, what was fre frequency of it, where do you store backup, what is retention period. So that sort of queries will be there. For example, if you say that you have worked in application support profile. So in that case, a person may be interested in like what sort of issues usually come into production environment. How do you initiate the troubleshootings? How do you conclude the RC of the issue cost? What it steps do you take that the particular reported issue will not be reported again and again? Like preventive step. So that sort of discussion space should be given to the interviewer because if you keep on explaining you about your profile for maybe let us say 10 minutes so sometime it is seen like interview call is scheduled hardly for 30 minutes 20 minutes you have already taken just for your profile explanation about yourself and all so that is ideally not a very good idea just tell yourself within two to three minutes that is more than sufficient time to talk about yourself one more very interesting thing i would like to tell you be patient while a person is like asking question till the time the person completes the stuff while asking question wait at least for two to three seconds before giving answer sometimes the interviewer interviewer does not feel good that if you start speaking in mid, in between but yes that is a completely right if any question or the statement is not clear to you you can ask the interviewer very clearly that I did not get this particular point. Can you please repeat again? Or can you elaborate a little more? Rather than giving a wrong answer to the question, it's much better to ask about the question in detail. Right? Okay. So this is about your profile. Like how do we need to explain? So be quite specific about your profile. Tell only that which is relevant. Right? And most of time, like we are not supposed to tell about our family background. So that is it. Second thing. Next question was for the discussion. Take backup of logs on the backup server. It means like how do we take backup of logs, maybe of application, database, middleware or anything. So how do you take logs backup onto backup server? There are two things which are very, very clear. So first of all, the very first thing that before taking backup, we need to zip the particular files. We need to create a tar out of these particular logs reason being backup server is supposed to hold the logs maybe for long time sometimes based on the particular policies of the organization for example if you are working with a particular medical sector medical domain so multiple compliances are there where a particular uh, hospital or the particular regulatory authority says that minimum 10 years of logs are required. Mo maybe like uh, when you talk about like financial, so maybe up to 20 years of log transaction may be required. So when we are going to keep the data of logs onto backup server, so we need to ensure that each and every file, whatever is going to be copied onto backup servers, so that has to be compressed in order to save space. Moreover, proper backup mechanism has to be there such as what servers backup is there what years backup is there let us say we need to take whole backup of five years so first of all directory structure should be like first of all the year 
let us say it is 2018, 19, 20, 22, uh, 21 that way. Then after the month like Jan, Feb or so and so forth then after the particular files like all the files for example you are taking backup once a day so in order to be quite frequent and in order to be quite efficient while searching for the backup first of all create server IP folder uh, folder name with the server IP address then year then after months then after the backup files your backup files should also contain a particular uh, file name let us say that I want to take a backup of this particular file uh, like etc let us say this is the file for example I'm telling you now we need to take backup of this file inside let us say temp I'll give a name password hyphen date okay I'll define here like this So if you see, there is a particular date as well. So for example, if there are multiple files created, so what is the name of this particular file? Along with this particular file name, I have appended a particular date as well. Like on which date the backup was created. So this way we can ensure that backup is done. And when we, when we talk about like directory structure, so let us say there is a folder known as mkdr slash data. Go here or maybe like let us say we can call it like mkdr slash backup go inside it now create folders mkdir let us say 2018 or maybe 2019 or let us say 2020 or uh, 2021 that way so we can create multiple folders here then after inside these folders let us say it is 2021 we will create like folders with the name of months Jan, Feb, March, April, May and so on and so forth now inside these folders like whenever you are going to take backup so we need to log into this part directory and over here we need to take backup of individual files how it is going to be helpful first of all obviously even I missed one thing here like IP address of the server for example I have 200 servers I need to take backup of all 200 servers onto this location so how we are going to perform this first of all we will ensure that what is a particular folder like what is IP address of server uh, for what we are looking for the logs we will log into that uh, we will change the directory to that that, part, that particular folder then we will log into year like for what years log we are looking for then month what month log we are looking for then after the particular file we can easily check if you keep on pushing the data of all the servers into single directory so sometime if like limit breaches so let us say we have 50,000 files or so more than like uh, like uh, multi multi thousand files we have in a single directory so even running ls command let us say if we run ls asterisk so that's that's say like too many arguments so it becomes really hard for managing uh, the particular file management so that sort of things are there we need to ensure that no, there, there should not be a lot of files inside a single directory right that way then after uh, the next question which we which I try to discuss like what do we prefer rsync or scp so guys both can be used in order to sync to push backup from source to destination now what is better so for doing backup for the first time either you can use scp or you can use rsync scp is object level command object level command means let us say if you want to copy something from here let us say scp slash etc pass level duty and let us there is a just for example i'm giving let us say admin at the rate 10.10.10 .10 .10, uh, let us say 10.10.10 .10 .10 .10, then slash 10 so if i run this particular command so it is going to replace it is going to copy the file from source to destination but let us say if I have to copy same file again and again so what will I do here I will use here rsync why is that so rsync is always going to ensure that if this file is incrementing there is an increment of data inside this particular file so it will not copy the entire file but it will copy only appended data or the added, the added data for example if there is a file of 1gb this, this file has size of 1gb today and 
uh, I copied it to slash this particular server on this location today and next day the particular size of this particular file is 1.1 GB. SCP is going to copy all the data from source to destination wherein rsync will copy only updated data. That is the major advantage of using that particular command. Uh, like rsync is much better in comparison to provide you speed. Right. One more thing I would like to highlight that rsync command has to be available on both the servers like source as well as on destination. For example, if rsync command is not available or is not installed on this particular server, then it will not work. It will not allow you to copy data from source to destination. Wherein in case of scp command, so that works by default with the help of ssh and both the commands maybe it is ssh like it is rsync or it is scp both commands are going to work on port number 22 only both are secure but when the matter comes to speed rsync is faster for repeated data so that is it next what are the use cases of swap so guys when we talk about use cases of swap we need to understand that so every single server has couple of components let us say it has memory it has cpu network and it has disk so when we are talking about swap so swap is a particular use case when we are talking about memory total memory how much is available how what amount of memory is used what amount of memory is free in buffer cache and available so let us say there is a scenario that out of the 761 mb of ram like uh, 700 is used which means i have only free 50 mb free in that particular scenario for now right uh, right now i have this much so if there is a use case then when my operating system is in need to have more memory i cannot allocate memory on the fly so in order to ensure that because of any critical issue or because of any situation when my system is looking for additional ram additional memory my system should not go down my system should not through so oom killer oom like out of memory errors my system should not be throwing so in that case we add swap memory now the question here is how much amount should be added there so ideally two times of ram we are supposed to add but yes there are some exceptions as well let me bring that as well to, into your notice for example, if I have 1 GB of RAM, 2 GB, 2 GB of swap is good enough. If I have 16 GB of RAM, like 32 GB of swap is good enough. But let us say if there is a situation when I have let us say 1 terabyte of RAM onto one physical server or maybe into one, some virtual machines, 2 terabyte of swap is not recommended. So at max 128 GB and in rare cases like 256 GB of swap is more than sufficient. Because let us say if we have 128 GB of swap available on the system and out of that 65 GB or maybe 70 GB swap is being utilized which means our system is really running out of memory and if we keep on adding the swap then obviously our system's performance will definitely go down so that way so at like uh, usually the answer is two times of RAM but not beyond one like 128 GB of swap even 128 GB is way too far, way too much, right? So like up to 64 GB, maybe 32 GB swap, swap is good enough because before beyond that if we go, then in that particular case, our system will definitely slow down if we start, if we keep on using a lot of swap memory, okay? How will you identify which process is running on which port? So let us say, uh, like what is the particular expectation of the interviewer in, in such cases? So let us say if I run a command net stat, okay, net stat command is not there. I will install DNF install uh, net tools. This is the particular package for uh, net stat command net tools. So guys, keep this thing in mind. One more thing I would like to identify here and highlight. DNF is a particular replacement of yum command. So when we are working with RHL, either you can use, for example, yum install vim or you can use DNF install vim like that. So either of the command you can use. DNF is a replacement of yum, yum command. Okay. So netstat hyphen 
T U N L P. This is the particular command which we usually execute in order to identify which process is running on which particular port. Now, let us say if there are multiple processes running, then how will we identify? For example, this is Java, this is Java, this is Java, this is Java. And different ports are there. Let us say this is 6060, this is 7070, this is 8080. Just for example, I'm giving. Right. So let us say if you need to identify that which particular process of Java is using this particular port number. So first of all, we will run this command netstat hyphen T U N L P. What does that mean? T for TCP, as you can see it here, U for UDP, N for numeric value of this, like numeric value of I, this particular host name. Instead of providing you the domain name of this host, or you, you like you can see this like local host here. So in order to convert this value into IP address, we use TUNLP. Now this particular has given us this particular PID. So after running this particular command, what we are going to do? We are going to run a command PS-EF or like AUX you can use, same option, grab this one. This has told me like what exact command is being used here. So in case of Java, there will be a particular complete file running with java hyphen jar so and so like that sort of command you will be able to find so that kind of stuff you will find so what is the way first of all run netstat hyphen t u n l p command then after pick the pid or you can call that program name or pid you will pick then after you will use that grabbed pid with the help of ps hyphen ef pipe grab and that particular pid so this is the way to identify like which particular process is running on which particular port so and okay one more thing what key points okay that, that is completed so what key points to consider before initiating dr drill so guys this is going to be really interesting topic because this discussion went on for maybe for more than half an hour so i'll be telling you this particular like what key points to consider before dr within next session thank you so very much for your time for watching this if you like the video please do like share and subscribe to my channel and please do not to share with your friends who are in need to have this sort of knowledge. Thank you very much. Have a good time. God bless you.